welcome to Hindu Analysis August 23, 2018. So today we are going to see all these articles. The first article is the Quad countries discuss ocean security. So what the news here is the four think tanks of the Quad countries recently discussed about the Indian Ocean security. So Indian Ocean security and submitted a report namely report on regional stability. So what are these Quad countries means they are India, US, Australia and Japan. So these four countries are the Quad countries. These are a strategic partnership uh, to have economic cooperation and technological cooperation among these countries as well as to suppress the dominance of China in the Indian Ocean region. So in this report, in this report on regional stability, they proposed 20 policy recommendations for maintaining stability in the Indian Ocean region. So and it also aims at free, inclusive and open Indo-Pacific region. So it should be accessible to every country that is what they aimed at and also this meeting aims at helping maintaining independent security and economic policies for each and every countries. What are these Indo-Pacific regions? So now they are actually aiming at the stability in the Indo-Pacific region right. So what are this Indo-Pacific region means? So we see here this East Africa, the certain part of Middle East, the Indian Ocean region and the Southeast Asian countries as well as the Australia certain part. So these are all constitute the Indo-Pacific region. So in order to increase the stability as well as the economic cooperation in this Indo-Pacific region, what we are aiming is, so this uh, discussion on the ocean security by these Quad countries is seen as an alternative to unilateral Chinese investment as well as the regional objective of the Chinese. So we all know that China is trying to dominate the Indian Ocean region unilaterally and also want to become a superpower. So in order to uh, make the China's dominance leisure, this Quad countries now propose this ocean security dialogue is seen as an alternative. So this discussion by the Quad countries is also aiming at opposing the establishment of permanent Chinese military bases in the Indian Ocean region. So it is to oppose that also and also to enhance the sea land defense capabilities of these Indian Ocean region countries. So the second article is government will meet Kerala's needs through domestic efforts. So what the news here is, we all knew the recent news which is Kerala is now experiencing unprecedented natural calamity which affect or which led to the loss of uh, huge lives as well as the materials. So now the government is also taking various relief measures in order to restore the normal life in Kerala. So various help measures are coming from various states of a country like uh, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Odisha etc. Not only from within our country, now the UAE is also ready to offer a relief fund of nearly 700 crore as a relief fund to Kerala but our central government is politely denying the offer stating that India is capable of dealing with its own uh, of any kind of natural calamities. This is what our central government states and also the Ministry of External Affairs stated that India is preferring the domestic resources over the foreign assistance as of now to deal with the Kerala's issue. And apart from the domestic resources, the NRIs, the PIOs and the international entities, if they want to give such relief fund, then they can contact and donate the relief fund to PM relief fund as well as the CM relief fund. So this is what the central government recently stated. So this is UAE. So now only they are only extending their helping hand to Kerala. So the third article is accept 700 crore UAE offer or compensate us. So this is what stated by the Kerala chief minister. So the Kerala chief minister recently asked the central government to either receive the 700 crore fund from the UAE or compensate that, e that much equivalent amount to Kerala for relief measures. So he also stated that the center should go by the 2016 NDMP plan which is the National Disaster Management Plan. So if you go into that National Disaster Management Plan under international cooperation topic what they are mentioning in that plan is as per the policy the government of India usually doesn't issue any appeal for the foreign assistance in the wake of disaster. If, if any disaster occurs, the government of India is not usually go for the foreign assistant as per the policy. This is what uh, proposed in the NDMP plan. So, but 
however if the national government of another country in this case uae offers 700 crore right so similarly if the national government of another country voluntarily offers assistance to any other country as a goodwill gesture in unity with the disaster victim so if they voluntarily gives you the fund then the cg may accept that is the central government may accept this is also mentioned in that same ndmp plan so usually we don't accept but if voluntarily some country gives the relief fund then we can accept that is what stated in this ndmp plan so ta taking this as a justification kerala chief minister insisted the central government either to accept this 700 crore from UAE or to compensate the equivalent amount to the Kerala's relief measures. And also the Ministry of Home Affairs, the Ministry of External Affairs as well as the state government of Kerala should review and channelize the foreign offers which is received under this NDMP plan and it should properly channel it to the relief measures. So the fourth article is retrograde move. So retrograde means moving backward. So we are moving backward in terms of the religious issues which is happening now. So we are having Indian Penal Code. Under that we are having Section 295A. So this Section 295A is now used as a blasphemy law in order to prevent the insulting of any religion like Christianity, Islam or Hinduism. So this blasphemy means insulting God or any religion which led to the hurting of the followers. So that is what usually this blasphemy means. So this blasphemy is also known as sacrilege. So both refers to the same thing which refers to the insulting of any religion. So why we need such law means in order to maintain the public order in our country because our country is a multi-religious country and religiously sensitive country. So in order to maintain the public order among the people we need such law. So but if you go and see the origin of this section 295A of the IPC then it was enacted by the British in 1927 as a tool to quell the rising incidence of the Hindu-Muslim conflict. So British enacted this section 295A in order to control the Hindu-Muslim conflict but now we are making use of the same law till today. Why they enacted such section means in 1925 a pamphlet which insulting or satirizing Prophet Muhammad was distributed across the Punjab. So this led to the violent protests by the Muslim against those uh, distributors of the pamphlets. So this violent protest led to the arrest of the protesters under section 153A of the IPC. So uh, this section 153A of IPC what it has the provision is whoever causing the enmity between two groups they are uh, coming under the ambit of 153a and they should be punished under this 153a but the court released those violent protesters of the such scenario stating that this is not causing enmity between any groups so it is just expression so the court actually released those protesters and also the court suggested that there should be a separate provision to deal with such kind of scenarios like speak, speaking ill of any god or speaking ill of any religion or uh, issuing such kind of pamphlet so to deal with these kind of things a separate provision is needed that is what the court suggested so for that purpose section 295a was inserted so this section 153a is different it is for causing enmity between two groups and section 295a is very different it is whoever speaking ill or insulting any religion is coming under this ambit section 295a but if you see the usage of this section 295a what a major concern here is by making use of this section 295a that is the blasphemy law of the IPC many people or started misusing this law by putting the cases against the innocent people. So recently a private member bill is put forward in order to amend this blasphemy law in order to reduce the misuse and reduce the sentencing whoever getting punished under this section 295A of IPC. So in order to prevent the misuse of this section only a private member bill is introduced recently and why because any word which is against this blasphemy law if a person is speaking or uh, if a person is telling his opinion about this blasphemy law how it is misused or anything then it is seen as an attack on the religion itself even though the people are talking about the blasphemy law it is seen as an attack on the religion itself and the people started to attacking the people who are telling their or who are putting forward their views so the law which is actually uh, enacted in order to protect the religion itself is now become sanctimonious so that this is why this reason private members bill asked to amend this blasphemy law to reduce the misuse of the blasphemy law 
but as an exact opposite to this scenario what now happening is the Punjab cabinet recently approved the amendments to the CRPC as well as the IPC why, uh, what means to make sacrilege of all religious texts punishable with life imprisonment so, which means insulting or making bad comments about the religious texts such as Bible, Bhagavad Gita as well as the Quran is punishable and it is a crime with life imprisonment as a punishment. So that is what the recent proposal by the Punjab cabinet and it's approved now. So how such proposal came in the sense? So initially what the Punjab government actually wanted is to make the sacrilege or insulting of the holy Guru Granth Sahib as an offence or as a crime and for that only they need the life imprisonment as a punishment. Initially they needed that only but the centre opposed or rejected. So this proposal is uh, in 2016 and 2017 the centre actually rejected such proposal stating that protecting the holy book of only one religion would make it discriminatory as well as anti-secular. We are a secular country. So if you want to include the punishment for these kind of insulting terms against any religion, so if you want to include the punishment of sacrilege against any religion, then include all religion, not exclusively for Sikh religion. So this is what the center stated in 2017 as a reply to 2016 Punjab government proposal. So for as a reply to the center's response what the Punjab government is now trying to make is they are putting forward this secular bill which is to include section 295 AA of the IPC so they now trying to insert this section 295 AA into the IPC so this section 295 AA deals with injury damage or sacrilege or insulting terms to Guru Granth Sahib as well as Bhagavad Gita Quran as well as the Bible so all religion it include all religion to make it secular so whoever speaking ill or insulting the religious text these religious texts with an intention to hurt the religious feelings of the people then there they shall be punished with the imprisonment of life so this is the new proposal under 295 AA so this is put forward now by Punjab government what is the way forward here is there are already a history of misuse of these kind of blasphemy laws which hurts a lot of innocent people and also this enactment of such law like section 295a section 295aa is seen as a serious infringement on the people's freedom of speech so it is also getting affected so we should make all these things into our consideration and we have to move forward that is what proposed in this article so the last article is pulling back from the brink so this article majorly talks about the how the human beings are changing the environment so how the human beings are initially evolved and how they live in consonance with the environment and how they are trying to make use of the environment and now how they are actually exploiting the environment which leads to lot of consequences such as global warming deforestation etc so this article majorly talks about how we have to conserve our environment so the article starts like this the technology trends and the decisions which we are taking in the next decade or the next 10 to 20 years so that decisions are going to determine the path of our earth system for next hundreds of thousands of years so what we are doing for the uh, next 10 to 20 years will determine the next thousands of years that is what they actually stated in this article so what they also proposed is some extraordinary changes or record from our side from the human sides to prevent the hot house earth where there is no return if you reach such such a point which is the hot house earth which is very much uh, rise in temperature of our environment so if you reach such a level then there is no return then there is no one to save us or protect us so now we are going to see how we evolve okay so before during the holocene period which is 12000 years ago the homo sapiens which are the humans settled and they developed agriculture and lot of technological innovations etc so from there we started evolving and we make use of the burning of fossil fuels and we started deforestation which in turn led to the greenhouse gas emissions and now it resulted in the huge uh, impact on the temperature of our environment which is the global warming so today we are living in an equilibrated earth in the sense now we are living in an environment which is having a temperature which is perfect fine for our ecosystem to flourish so we are having 
a correct temperature but if we maintain the same level of exploitation of the environment then it leads to the heavy rise in the temperature which has its own major consequences so this human plays a dominant role which is known as anthropocene which means the humans are now playing a major role in shaping our earth's ecosystem so we are shaping our earth's ecosystem we are only exploiting the environment so such human play in the environment is termed as anthropocene so whenever any human activity disrupts the ecosystem or if you are going to touch the environment in a negative way then the environment is going to give you the feedback either in a positive way or negative way one way or other so if you see how the environment is giving us the feedback in the sense there is a positive feedback which is melting of the greenland ice increases the open waters and this water absorbs more sunlight which increases warming of the ocean and causes further melting so it is a positive feedback so similarly if you see the negative feedback due to the continuous emission by means of technological innovation industrial development etc there is an increase in co2 emissions which in turn increases the chemical weathering and removes the co2 from the atmosphere itself so this led to the global warming so this is a negative feedback so if you see here environment gives both the positive and the negative feedback so we have to analyze and we have to take the further step in order to mitigate the environmental deterioration so what they are actually suggesting here is crossing the threshold that means 2 degree celsius warmer than the pre industrial time which means now we are 1 degree celsius warmer than the pre industrial time but the threshold now they are setting is 2 degree celsius if you are reaching that threshold then the ecosystem is going to irrevocably disrupted that means we couldn't be able to revert back the ecosystem it is going to affect that much the ecosystem so this is the threshold limit so it is a kind of a warning so already we are having a lot of major events which is a negative events taken place which is the destruction of the amazon forest due to wildfire loss of permafrost with warming in arctic as well as the antarctic ocean and the weakening of the co2 absorption by the oceans so these are all the major disruptions in our ecosystem which is already taken place so if you see here this melting of ice uh, how it affects the ecosystem okay. it is not only going to affect the human beings it is also going to affect the animals the birds or whoever depend on the environment so that is what they stated so in this picture you see here the arctic sea is thinning which means in 1980 the depth or the width of the ice is this much and in 2005 it is reduced to this much so this melting of ice increases the sea level or rises the sea level which in turn the sea water now intrude into the islands or intrude into the land so which has its own consequences so the atmospheric concentration of co2 is also now getting increased if you see the mid miocene period which is like 15 to 17 million years ago there is only 300 to 500 ppm of co2 in the atmosphere but in mid pliocene period which means 3 to 4 million years ago it is like 400 ppm co2 and now we are maintaining that level which means now also we are having this 400 ppm of carbon dioxide so this carbon dioxide is responsible for the global warming so we should take care of that so this increase in the level of concentration of atmospheric co2 so this is responsible for the global warming so if it is getting increased if it is crossing the threshold then the global warming is going to get increased and which in turn increases the melting of the ice which increases the level of water which also increases the open waters so this melting of ice in turn increases the open waters which in turn submerges the island countries and will lead to the emergence of environmental refugees which means if we fail to protect our environment then there will be emergence of environmental refugees all over the world so we have to take care of this so what the way forward they suggested here is there should be a deliberate sustained action to secure our earth's ecosystem and so they also stated that the laws of arctic ice could be actually reversed within few hundreds of years but the laws of antarctic ice would take much longer to revert it back to the original level so they, there should also be cut in the greenhouse gas emissions and increasing the carbon sinks which means you have to uh, absorb the atmospheric carbon dioxide and sink it under the ground so you should do that and deflecting the solar radiation to modify the energy balance you have to maintain the solar radiation input and the output in order to maintain the energy balance of our uh, environment so these are all the suggestions which is put forward in order to preserve or conserve our environment so there should be some technological solutions that means okay but the technological solutions alone is not sufficient there should be more social values as well as the economic values and that is more essential that is the human should come forward and try to preserve the environment with the help of the technology